This tutorial shows how to add fields to a form using form control extensions and create logic extensions using form control functions to hide, conditionally show and highlight controls on a form. In this tutorial, we will create a form extension and add three fields to a form. Create a logic extension with a form control extension to hide controls on a form. Create a logic extension with a form control extension to conditionally show controls on a form and also highlight the control. Edit the form extension to associate the logic extensions to events on the form. And then we will test the logic extension. Let's get started. First, we will create a form extension and add three fields to a form. Sign in to the JD Edwards Enterprise One application and navigate to Job Master Revisions. Let's enter P51006 in the fast path and press Enter. Click Find to load a list of jobs in the grid. Let's select any row in the grid. Click the form extension icon and add the branch type, billing type, amount, cost at completion fields by dragging them to a clear space on the form. Next, let's create a logic extension with a form control extension to hide controls on a form. Let's sign in to the Orchestrator Studio and click Logic Extensions. Click the new field and in the name field, let's enter Hide a list of controls and add a description. In the Data Structure tab, click Add Control and from the Data Type drop-down list, select Form Control List. Let's rename this item as Controls to Hide. Now click the logic tab and add a form control function here. In the form control function panel, let's enter the label as controls to hide and then add a description. Let's select the function name as hide control and select the control as controls to hide. In a later part of this tutorial, you will understand how to use a form extension to associate this hide a list of controls logic extension to a form and hide the fields added to the form. Next, let's create a logic extension with a form control extension to conditionally show controls on a form and also highlight the control. For this new logic extension, enter the name as show extended controls and add a description. Let's add a data structure. Enter A301 and click the plus icon. This is the data dictionary item for a string field. Let's change the name as field trigger. Verify that the value in the IO type field is selected as input only. Now let's add a control and in data type select form control list. Rename the item as controls to show. Now let's add another control and select data type as control list and change the name to controls to highlight. In the logic extension design panel, let's add an if else statement here and then enter values in the if else panel. Now let's create this if else statement. Click the launch criteria builder icon and from the right panel click field trigger. The value is equal to is displayed automatically. Let's map field trigger to JB. Now after the true label, let's add a form control function and enter the label as show controls and add a description. Let's select function name as show control and control as controls to show. Let's now add another form control function here. For this form control function, let's add the label as highlight control and add a description. Let's select function name as set edit control color and control as controls to highlight and select the color as yellow. Next, let's understand how to associate these logic extensions to events on the form. Let's access the job master revisions application and select any field. Click the form extensions icon. Click associate orchestrations. Now 
Let's click inside the control field to set the focus inside the field. Click in the blank space inside the blueprint but not on any individual control to select the form as the control. Verify that the value job master revisions is displayed in the control field. Select the dialog is initialized event. Click the logic extensions tab and click next. In step 2, here let's select hide a list of controls logic extension that we created earlier in this tutorial and click next. In step 3, click the default array icon. Let's move the associate logic extensions wizard to the right so that we can see the new fields that we added earlier. Click in the click input fields to map field and then use the cursor to select the branch type label on the form. Verify that the branch type appears in the click input fields to map field. Now let's repeat this for the branch type field. Next, repeat this step again for the billing type label and billing type field and the cost at completion label and cost at completion field. When we map all the labels and fields, the six rows are displayed in the controls to hide grid. Click save and click next. In step 4, let's click next. In step 5, click save as the controls to hide logic extension has no outputs. Next, we will repeat this process to associate the second, that is, show extended controls logic extension to this form. Click in the control field to set the cursor focus inside the field. On the form, let's click in the blank space inside the blueprint, but not on any individual control, to select the form as the control. Verify that the value job master revisions is displayed in the control field. And then select the post dialog is initialized event. And click next. In step 2, from the logic extension main drop down list, let's select the show extended controls logic extension. Click next and in step 3, let's click in the mapping input field. Then select the type business unit field on the form. Make sure to select the type business unit field and not the label. Verify that the value type business unit is displayed in the mapping input field. Now let's click the map form controls tab. Next to controls to show, click the default array icon. Click in the click input fields to map field and then select the branch type label on the form. Verify that the value branch type is displayed in the mapping control field. Let's repeat this for the branch type field. Next, let's repeat the step again for the billing type label and field and the costed completion label and field. When we map all the labels and fields, the six rows are displayed in the controls to show grid. Now let's click the default array icon next to controls to highlight. Click in the click input fields to map field and then select the billing type control on the form. Make sure to select the control and not the label. Verify that billing type is displayed in the click input fields to map field. Click save and then click next. In step 4, click next. In step 5, let's click save as the controls to highlight logic extension has no outputs. Now, let's close the associate logic extensions wizard. Click save and close the form extension manager panel. We now have associated the two logic extensions with events on the form. When the form first opens, that is, the dialog is initialized event occurs, the hide a list of controls logic extension will hide the three labels and fields. Immediately following that event, if the value of type business unit field is GB, the post dialog is initialized event will run the show extended controls logic extension. Now let's test the form control extensions. Let's access the job master revisions and verify that the value in the job type field is GB. Now let's select a record. Notice that the form now includes all the three fields that we added and also the billing type field is highlighted in yellow. The fields are displayed because the value in the type business unit field is JB. Now let's try with any value other than JB.
Here, we can see that the form does not include the three fields that we added. That is because the value in type business unit field is something other than GB. In this tutorial, we added new field to a form using form extensions and created logic extensions with form control functions to hide, show and also highlight the control. And then we associated these logic extensions to events on the form. Using these skills and this same pattern, you could create logic extensions that accept inputs from forms, evaluate values for if-else paths and selectively show, hide, enable, disable, set control text and set control color. For more information, see the JD Edwards Enterprise One Tools Orchestrator Guide and visit us online at jda.com. Thanks for watching.